Well, good morning, everybody. In this video, I kind of quickly want to cover the setup for the next three big high impact storm systems that are going to be moving across the country, beginning first with the upper level wind speeds uh, on the system that's moving through the northwest today. So you can see here's the branch of the polar jet, very well positioned and timed with the subtropical jet, finally grabbing hold of that low that's been sitting off the California coast all weekend. Well, this is going to continue to race across North America, and as it does so, it's going to be producing quite a bit of high-impact weather. But I just want to show you something. Watch these waves coming through. Here's number one. Look at that trough right there coming through Tuesday into Wednesday, pressing into New England. We have system number two that's going to sneak right out of the southern plains by Wednesday night into Thursday, move toward, right there it is, toward the southeast. System number three right here coming into the Western United States. This one's going to be much slower. It's going to curl itself up toward Canada, has a different tilt on it. And to be honest with you, I could tell you there's maybe a fourth system waiting in the wings here at around the 6th, 7th, and 8th coming into the Pacific Northwest yet again. So very active time period with respect to our jet. In addition to winter storm warnings, which line the northern Rockies and the Cascades, there's a lot of high wind advisories, watches, and warnings, including some strong downslope winds coming off the Rocky Mountains. Extending into the Midwest, into the Western Corn Belt, this is all red flag warning, it also runs up and down the high plains. We do have winter storm watches up for the Red River Valley and weather, weather, winter weather advisory, excuse me, for this part of North Dakota. I'm telling you, the next few days are going to be extremely windy. This is just adding up through noon on Wednesday, maximum accumulated wind gusts. So coming off the mountains, we could easily see 50 to 70 mile an hour gusts. And as the system takes shape across the country and sweeps through, its winds will easily be 30 to 50 miles an hour synoptically. That's not thunderstorm winds, but synoptically around the low. <clears throat> so watch the temperature change. This is through the middle of the day on Monday into Monday evening. Now we're going to get out there into early Tuesday morning. I want to show you what's going on by the middle of the day on Tuesday. There are two separate lows, one in eastern Iowa, one in the UP. The one in eastern Iowa has got me concerned about the risk of severe weather here. The one in the UP is the main low that has the front attached to it, the cold front. And you're going to watch that cold air just snap through very quickly throughout the rest of the day on Tuesday into early Wednesday morning and advance to the south. The temperature swings associated with this could be 40 to 50 degrees. And as it comes through, it could really initiate some severe weather initially and then get us into some much, much colder air with snow. So today, marginal risk in this part of the eastern Corn Belt. Then as you get into tomorrow, broad air from Missouri through Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. I'm mostly concerned in this area about the risk of rotating thunderstorms. I think that's where we have our best shear environment. So quickly walking through the NAM, this is through middle of the day on Monday here, the 26th into this afternoon and this evening. So as we play into the overnight hours, this is where we could get some of those storms showing up. We're going to watch the snow coming out of the west, following that cold front through the middle of the day tomorrow. Now by three o'clock, we have one low here, another one here, and you're going to see from three o'clock to about six o'clock right there, the warm front of the southerly low initiating the risk of rotating storms. There will likely be storms building down the dry line, which we're right in through here, and the main cold front behind it giving us a rapid conversion over to snow by the evening. Now, as we watch this system move towards New England, we do have the risk of storms coming over the Appalachian Mountains, maybe here into parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio, and then the model stops right at noon on Wednesday. So we have yet to see how this kind of curls up into New England with this one. But we'll flip over in a moment and look at the other two models. Here they are. GFS left, European right. Let's play through what we've already seen. Good agreement through this point. Where are we? Wednesday morning, Wednesday midday, Wednesday evening. Now watch the models trying to pull some snow through New England. That's going to be an interesting one to forecast. Then we get into... Thursday uh, evening. The next low emerges, the one to the south, and it rolls right across the mid-south into the southeast, delivering showers and storms. And while all of that's going on, the third system's coming into the west. Now watch it again. This is starting off on Thursday. Keep an eye here. Going into Friday and Saturday and Sunday before that low comes out. Now remember, the difference is the second low curls up to the north rather than zipping across the country. Actually, it's the third low, forgive me. And therefore, it's going to be slower. It's going to line snow up probably from, gosh, Saskatchewan all the way down to Arizona here at times. And it's going to bring in a much slower front with some heavier rains. 
and the conversion behind it over to snow on the backside could be very similar to load that just came through if you're looking at the GFS. That's just three. There's a fourth one still stacked up here, but we'll use the ensembles to see that one. Total accumulated precip from the high-res European model. That's what it looks like. This is the GFS. How far out does this go? One week. The GFS is wetter on the West Coast. The European model, though, look at the Sierra Nevada, Cascades, Klamath Mountains, Northern Rockies. We're talking 40 to 60 inches of snow possible at the highest peaks here. And in the uh, Northern Rockies, maybe two to three feet. The GFS is way more aggressive on the snow. I just wanted to point that out. What I do like is the agreement here. There is the European. There's the GFS. That is some really solid agreement on the placement. Now, if you're over here in the Mid-Atlantic or coming out of the Eastern Corn Belt and you're starting to see these stripes coming through, remember behind that front with the first low that sneaks through, it's trying to quickly convert things over to snow. So we'll have to see if we can get some snow out of this. I just need you to know that the possibility is there. Uh, we do need to fill in some holes here. So to see all that snow coming into the Cascades and Northern Rockies, I love it. The snow that's going to be coming into this part of Canada in the northern plains of the United States, we need snow in those areas in a big way. But I want to stress that that system that follows it on the third and the fourth does have the potential for ice across parts of the northern plains and the eastern Canadian prairie here coming out of Manitoba into uh, Ontario. All right, probability maps. There's your chance of getting an inch, according to the European model, over the next 10 days. Here's three inches, and here's six. All right. The biggest amounts are going to come in the West after this. There's the probability of 12. I actually would love to see this right here. This is 18, 24, 36. So three feet of snow. Look at that. Great probabilities. On the drier side of things, the area that I'm most concerned about being dry shrunk. As you can see here, it's now just confining this part of the Western and High Plains, but the Southern half of that, better moisture coming in farther to the North. We were anticipating this changing, but it's good to see it actually show up in the models. How do we get moisture back into this area? Get a deep trough to come over the mountains and stir things up right here with some really strong negative tilt on that trough to pull that moisture in. The other way is we wait until we get into late April and May, and that is when we get into the dry line season where storms just rip off the mountains right through this part of the country. On the wetter side of this, this is the chance of getting over an inch, and here's the chance of getting over two inches. So heavy rains possible here out of the next three systems. And then the West is where we have the highest probability of being the wettest. All right, from there, notice by March 7th, still have the Western trough. And that is why the week two forecast continued to paint wetter, wetter, and wetter as systems roll through. You're going, wait a minute, I see drier in the West. Well, you just get a short break. It'll come right back on again. What's important about this pattern is what it could possibly be doing to undo some of these drier areas we've seen in the month of February. I'll be watching that and the soil moisture values hopefully respond to these better precipitating systems. I think it's going to take a whole lot more than this to undo some of these issues in the Corn Belt and also over here in parts of the Carolinas in the south, but there's better news overall. Later this week, we're going to talk about the influences of this very warm February on the future pattern, March, April, May. But as it stands right now, boy, the heat's on today and tomorrow. Watch this. This is the high temperatures today on Monday. Here it is on Tuesday. Now, if you're right here in this part of the Midwest, you're going to go from 70s today to by Wednesday, highs trying to get out of the 20s. And then watch the warmer air exit east, warmer air returns in the central United States. And by Friday, you're back up toward 70 again. So a nice 45 degree swing in temperatures just in the high temperatures alone here. But the fact that the West is holding onto the colder air the longest, and it's out there in the day 5 through 10 and day 10 through 15, tells me that this pattern loves doing something like this. So to get toward the end of this video, that's being supported by the MJO. It is finally trying to leave null space and show up by early March into phase four. Phase four keeps a Western trough. That's, that's historically consistent. And as we think about what that could mean, the new March forecast for the, from the CPC, at least March 9th through the 22nd, looks very close to what I've been sharing with you for a few weeks on my March outlook using the composite years that all had El Nino. So we'll watch that carefully. It's also showing up in the European model, cooler west, warmer east. They're keeping that pattern around through most of March. And on the precipitation side of it, you can see that stripe of wet here and then very wet in the southeast. That's been a very consistent picture. All right, let's get to wrapping this up. First, Harvest progress on soybeans and Matagross is ahead of average. So is planting by about 8% of Safrina corn. They are drier over the next week. Wet in Northern Argentina, wet in the Northeast of Brazil. 
I'm concerned about that pattern hanging on for all of March. There's not a whole lot of movement to push that away. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. And the last thing I want to finish up with for you is some information on El Nino. And what I want to tell you is you're going to see a change in these ocean temperatures happening in March. And that's because if you look down deep, so this is ocean depth versus going across the Pacific from South America to Australia or Indonesia, watch here coming out of January to February, some colder water beginning to upwell. And that's just probably going to surface at some point, giving us a little cool stripe in through here. And we just need to have a discussion about what that means and make sure we're not taking it out of context. So a lot to cover in my shorter video today, but we'll keep an eye on it for you and we'll talk again tomorrow. Thanks.